أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسولنا محمد الأمين الحمد لله على نعمة الإسلام الحمد لله على نعمة الإيمان الحمد لله على نعمة القرآن الحمد لله الذي هدانا لهذا وما كنا لنهتدي لولا أن هدانا الله لقد جاءت رسل ربنا بالحق صلوا على رسولنا محمد صلوا على شفيع ذنوبنا محمد صلوا على قرة عيوننا محمد اللهم صل على رسولنا محمد وعلى آل رسولنا ونبينا محمد بعدد كل داء ودواء وبارك وسلم عليه وعليهم كثيرا اللهم صل على رسولنا محمد وعلى آل رسولنا ونبينا محمد كلما اختلف الملوان وتعقب العصران وكرر الجديدان واستقبل الفرقدان وبلغ روحه وأرواح أهل بيته من التحية والسلام أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي وأفوض أمري إلى الله إن الله بصير بالعباد وما توفيقي ولا اعتصامي إلا بالله عليه توكلت وعليه فليتوكل المتوكلون ربنا لا تزغ قلوبنا بعد إذ هديتنا وهب لنا من لدنك رحمة وهب لنا من لدنك رحمة وهب لنا من لدنك رحمة إنك أنت الوهاب ربنا اغفر لنا ولإخواننا الذين سبقونا بالإيمان ولا تجعل في قلوبنا غلا للذين آمنوا ربنا إنك رؤوف رحيم اللهم صل على رسولنا محمد حتى لا تبقى صلاة اللهم بارك على رسولنا محمد حتى لا تبقى بركة اللهم ارحم رسولنا محمد حتى لا تبقى رحمة اللهم سلم على رسولنا محمد حتى لا يبقى سلام اللهم صل على رسولنا محمد وعلى آل رسولنا ونبينا محمد كلما ذكره الذاكرون وكلما سهى عنه الغافلون اللهم لا سهل إلا ما جعلته سهلا وأنت تجعل الحزن سهلا إذا شئت اللهم عملنا بما أنت أهله ولا تعاملنا بما نحن أهله اللهم اجعل هذا العمل خالصا لوجهك الكريم اللهم انصر من نصر الدين واخذ من خذل المسلمين اللهم انصر جيوش المسلمين وعساكر الموحدين واكتب الصحة والسلامة والعفو والعافية علينا وعلى الحجاج والغزاة والمسافرين في برك وبحرك من أمة محمد أجمعين اللهم أخلصنا بخالصة ذكر الدار وجعلنا عندك لمن المصطفين الأخيار اللهم أخلصني بخالصة ذكر الدار وجعلني عندك لمن المصطفين الأخيار رب زدني علما والحقني بالصالحين رب زدنا علما والحقنا بالصالحين ربنا آتنا من لدنك رحمة وهيئ لنا من أمرنا رشدا اللهم رب إني لا أحصي ثناء عليك فأنت كما أثنيت على نفسك ولا حول ولا قوة إلا بك يا رب العالمين وذكر فإن الذكرى تنفع المؤمنين وذكر بالقرآن من يخاف وعيد وأما بنعمة ربك فحدث
أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الذين يؤمنون بالغيب ويقيمون الصلاة ومما رزقناهم ومما رزقناهم ينفقون والذين يؤمنون بما أنزل إليك وما أنزل وما أنزل من قبلك وبالآخرة هم يوقنون أولئك على هدى من ربهم وأولئك هم المفلحون صدق الله العظيم These are ayat from Surah Al-Baqarah, the second surah of Al-Quran. Starting with the third ayah till the fifth ayah of this surah. In the third ayah, Allah the Almighty described Al-Muttaqeen, those who protect themselves against every kind of dangers against every kind of difficulty or calamity whether from Allah the Almighty as a punishment or from anything else but actually we know that all difficulties or all calamities comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so if we protect ourselves from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, from His wrath, if we keep ourselves careful uh, towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if we deal with Him in a way that Allah deserves, if we respect Him, then we will be in safety. And this is the taqwa of the believer. He knows that in this life, and after this life, all things in the hand of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For Allah is in control of all things. So if we fulfill His commandments, if we perform our duty towards Allah, the Almighty, the Exalted, then He will make everything better for us in this life and in the hereafter. Because Allah promised the believers as a good life in this earth, earthly life. He said, فَلَنُحِيَنَّهُ حَيَاةً طَيِّبًا Surely we will give him a good life in this life. Then in the hereafter he will reward him with paradise. So the smart way, the best way, the most careful way is to believe in him while understanding the reality while realizing the truth because there is no sound iman without understanding it without witnessing the truth in Islam the only way to be a good believer is to follow the truth and uh, using the mind and the heart and whatever faculties granted by the Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala therefore he described in the ayah number three al-muttaqeen as al-ladhina yu'minuna bil ghayb those who believe unseen those who follow the truth those who look for trust unseen al-ladhina yu'minuna bil ghayb as we expounded this matter in the previous lecture, then Allah said, وَيُقِيمُونَ الصَّلَاةِ And they perform a salah. They fulfill a salah. They worship that Almighty God after recognizing Him, after recognizing His power, after recognizing that He is the one who created everything. The man of understanding should worship Him as uh, in order to show that he is respecting him in his life 
This is the sign of the respect, worshipping Allah, worshipping Him, ex uh, accepting Him in our life by fulfilling His commandments and avoiding from His prohib prohibitions. This is the deeds, righteous deeds of the believer and most important of them as salah which is uh, rapidly uh, repeats in the life of the believer five times in a day وَيُقِيمُونَ salah they keep salah life in their uh, day وَيُقِيمُونَ salah not just for a single day or not for a day in a week they keep performing salah every day every time five times in a day so that's the iqama of salah keep it up believe in him by following the way and the requirements of the belief then respecting him by fulfilling the actions of ibadah of worship then he said, and they spend of what we provided for them. And this is another sign, important sign, that we believe in Him and that we believed in His promise, whatever He will give us in the hereafter, and that we have already recognized His power over us, and that we have recognized that whatever we have here just comes from Allah Azza wa Jal as he said وَمَا بِكُمْ مِنْ نِعْمَةٍ فَمِنَ اللَّهِ whatever blessings you have is from Allah none of them created by you you couldn't create none of them <clears throat> whatever you have or actually whatever you gathered in this life you just received them from Allah Azza wa Jal and as a man of understanding when we understand this reality we should be most ready to spend from that wealth, from that whatever we received from Allah, in the sake of Allah the Almighty. Therefore Allah said, And out of what we have provided them, يُنْفِقُونَ They expand. <coughs> without giving something, without making infaq, without giving charity, we will not be able to prove that we realized the master and that he is the owner of whatever we see and whatever we have if we cannot give if we cannot give charity if we can we, if we cannot spend from our money in the sake of allah then it is it means that we are not sure about Allah, about that Allah is the owner of this kingdom and that He is able to give us tomorrow and after tomorrow. So we should gather for ourselves, for the future. We should do what we should uh, accumulate whatever we need in the future because we do not, we are not certain that God, that Allah, is having everything and that he will uh, be able to give us when we need in the future so uh, that's uh, the lack of Iman that shows that there is some problems in Iman therefore the believer should be ready in order to make in fact to give charity and Allah didn't ask us to give whatever all what we have he said some of what we give them they expend and Allah described it they do not waste when giving charity and they do not uh, uh, keep uh, the entire wealth without giving anything they, they follow a way between these two. They are they follow 
the conceivable way they give some of their money and uh, in the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they know that Allah uh, will give them will uh, give them uh, it back and will reward them in the hereafter therefore Allah said for that person who, who do not give from his money أَفَرَأَيْتَ الَّذِي تَوَلَّى وَأَعْطَى قَلِيلًا وَأَكْدَى أَعِنْدَهُ عِلْمُ الْغَيْبِ فَهُوَ يَرَى Allah said, have you seen that person who gives very little from his uh, wealth? Fearing that he, he may consume what he has and he may be poor in the future. Allah said, أَعِنْدَهُ عِلْمُ الْغَيْبِ Does he have the knowledge of unseen? So he knew that Allah will not give him. Therefore, he he's still gathering the money. He's, he uh, he keep himself away from uh, giving charity, making infaq in the sake of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. وَمِمَّا رَزَقْنَاهُمْ يُنْفِقُونَ But we know that Allah said, وَمَا أَنْفَقْتُمْ مِنْ شَيْءٍ فَهُوَ يُخْلِفُهُ Whatever you donate, whatever you give charity. In the sake of Allah, Allah will replace it. Allah will give it back to you. مَنْ ذَا الَّذِي يُقْرِضُ اللَّهَ قَرْضًا حَسَنًا فَيُضَعِفَهُ لَهُ أَضْعَفًا كَثِيرًا Who gives in the sake of Allah, Allah will multiply it for him. وَمِمَّا رَزَقْنَاهُمْ يُنْفِقُونَ And Allah named that money as that. So if uh, he means that I will not, I'm not in need of that money. I will not take it seriously. I'm just taking it in order to give it that money for you. Just show me that you are ready to spend from your money uh, in the sake of me, in the sake of Allah, the Almighty. So these are the way of uh, of protecting ourselves. If you do not follow these actions we will put ourselves in dangers whether in this life and in the hereafter if we do not use our mind if we do not take advantage of our creation many faculties given by Allah in order to follow the true path this is the way of Iman if we do not fulfill this task then we will put ourselves in uh, dangerous. If we do after recognizing Allah, after following these, this way of uh, recognizing Allah, if we do not then as a second step, if we do not worship Him, if we do not respect Him in our life, then we will we would pay our, uh, put ourselves in dangerous. Because just a man without worshiping Allah, just recognizing Him, without respecting Him, will mean nothing, it will not make sense. After recognizing him, after seeing his power, after seeing, seeing his qudra and his uh, exalted being over us, we should worship him and respect him and show that we are his servant, we are his creatures and we do not live uh, without him or by denying him we live this life as uh, a reward of Allah as a blessing of Allah and in every step we are we should be thankful to him that is uh, that is uh, the righteous deeds and that is uh, the actions uh, we should uh, fulfill in our lives and most importantly a salah and giving charity these three things very important in order to protect ourselves in this life and in the hereafter Allah continue to describe the way of taqwa the way of protecting ourselves from the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that is the main risk of our life Allah said وَالَّذِينَ يُؤْمِنُونَ and they are those 
who follow the way of Iman, it's valid. It should be the way of Iman, following the truth, looking for the truth, and trust uh, in order to trust them. Bima unzila ilayka. They believe in what we descended over you, in what we revealed or sent down to you. So we have to make Iman in Quran. We have to read it. We have to understand it. We have to look for the truth therein. We have to conceive the realities of Quran that is the way of Iman in, in this book otherwise we will not be a real believer of this book if we just say I believed in Quran without knowing the message of Quran without knowing how strong and how real the message of Quran without conceiving ourselves convincing ourselves we cannot be real believer that just imitating the others blindly by saying I believed in the Quran there is no difference by saying I believed in the book A or in the book B without knowing the reality of that book without understanding it without realizing it we cannot be a true believer. So Allah said the same word, used the same word, Iman, looking for the truth in order to trust that truth. He said, We have to receive this book and understand it. And after uh, realizing it, after reading it, convince ourselves making our research, whatever kind, whatever research we need, till to reach that level, in order to say, this book cannot be produced by any human, or by any jinn, or by any creature. This should be by, from my creator. We should reach that level in, uh, in order to be a true believer. So Allah said, say, or reach to that level to say say even if the jinns and uh, the humans the mankind if they come together in order to make such Quran like this they will fail they will not be able to do so even if they support each other we have to reach that level and we cannot reach that level to say that statement without reading Quran without trying to understand the Quran without looking for each ayah in Quran this is our task this is our uh, this is the requirement of Iman and Allah encouraged us this and Allah invited us to do this, it is mandatory for each believer. Therefore, he said in Quran, Quran, how they do not realize Quran, how they do not read it, how they do not uh, contemplate upon Quran. And we have to follow the same way in the books sent down by Allah before Quran whatever Allah sent down to nations before us like Bible and Torah we have to know about them we have to see them and realize them knowing that some part of them may be changed because Allah informed us that if you see some things which is not logical or which is which you cannot conceive then you, you can say this might not might not from Allah the Almighty because the human hand may uh, might, might, might have changed some part of them so we have to be ready when we read the books before Quran revealed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we have to be careful before saying 
that God, how God said this, it's not true. We should know that some part of them may be changed, but still we should respect them, still we should know that mainly they are from Allah Azza wa Jal and originally they are from Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala and we believe in them as revealed by Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala. So the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him said, you may read them, you may uh, share the knowledge of the books uh, before Quran, but you have to be careful. You have to be careful because some of them may change by uh, the human. Well, but in Quran, Quran, Allah said, "Inna nahnu nazzalna dhikra wa inna lahu lahafidun." We will uh, guard it. We are the one who sent this book, this dhikr, the last uh, revelation of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. So you will never find any mistake or any uh, raib, uh, any falsehood in this book. لا يأتيه الباطل. باطل falsehood cannot uh, come to this book neither from before it من لا يأتيه الباطل من بين يديه ولا من خلفه nor from behind it. So Allah keep it pure and He says you will not be able to find any mistake. So be uh, freely, make your research in Quran and uh, you can look each ayah and you have to look each ayah in order to see the word of God. At the end eventually you will say this is the word of God. This cannot be said by anyone or anyone other than the Almighty God. So this is the way of uh, the man of understanding. This is the way of uh, the true man who wants to reach the truth. And Allah the Almighty invited us and created us uh, content with this task. وَالَّذِينَ يُؤْمِنُونَ بِمَا أُنزِلَ إِلَيْكَ وَمَا أُنزِلَ مِنْ قَبْلِكَ And at the end of the ayah number 4 Allah said وَبِالْآخِرَةِ هُمْ يُقِنُونَ And these people, these believers, those who followed these ways, they are certain about the hereafter. If the man follows these ways, believing in Allah, Respect, recognizing him, worshipping him, spending from the money in the sake of Allah, believing in the books revealed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, making research openly about them, till convincing himself, then at the end he will have that belief. He will, ha he will come uh, to reach this reality that this life is limited is for a time just as a test from Allah and then there should be a second life a hereafter other life where Allah the Almighty will reward the righteous people those who take advantage of this life in order to uh, when following the truth and recognize the Creator and worshiping Him and loving Him while others denied him, while others followed the evil and commit evil actions without respecting their creator and they denied whatever faculties given to them by Allah the Almighty. They didn't care, of, or care about the truth, they just neglected it. They felt them, they behaved arrogantly without respecting the creator. Allah will punish them. So the other life is uh, mandatory for justice. Therefore the believers, those who have sound understanding, they see that there should be other life the hereafter. Allah said, Am amanu wa amilu salihati kal mufsidina fil -ard. Do you think that at the end the righteous people and the evil people will 
have nothing without any punishment or without any reward, just this life, how can you assume that? Then there will be no justice. Do you think that we will make them equal at the end? أَمْ نَجَعَلُ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ كَالْمُفْسِدِينَ فِي الْأَرْضِ Many tyrants died without receiving any punishment. And many uh, weak people, many wronged people, they died without taking the revenge. So if it is just this life, then there is no justice. But we see in the creation that there is a real balance between each thing. There should be a balance between the human being also. And this balance will be fulfilled or will be uh, per, uh, performed, uh, will take place in the hereafter. And so, therefore, hereafter logically is mandatory. There should be a, sec uh, a second life. That one who created us should take us, should uh, give us life again in order to uh, ask us about this life. Who, uh, who, uh, what we did, who sh uh, he should question us. There should be somewhere, uh, these things should be happened there. So Al-Akhirah, Allah said, Am muttaqina kal fujjar. Do you think that we will make those who protected themselves and those who uh, lived a wicked life and tortured the others, transgressed uh, the limits without respecting uh, the limitations of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Many evil things they did, al-fujjar. Can they be equal eventually with al-muttaqun, with the, those who protected themselves? You cannot assume that. Your mind, your heart, will not say yes for you. They will say no, there should be hereafter. So those who followed these actions mentioned in, in the ayah number three and, the, and ayah number four, they will eventually come to know that the hereafter is a plain reality. They have no doubt about the hereafter and that Allah is able to create, create them again as He created them in the first uh, one or in, as He created for the first time he is, it's, very, it's easier for Him to create them again to create us again as He created this life He will create the hereafter so logically there is no, uh, no problem uh, to think like that, to think that Allah is able to recreate us. And logically it's mandatory to assume that there should be, or the one who created us should create us again for the meaning of this life. Otherwise there will be no meaning for this life. Just live for some time and then nothing. And whatever you did is for nothing. It cannot be. It cannot be. No logic may accept this. No mind may accept this. No heart can uh, feel uh, good with uh, this consideration. They all will reject. They will say there should be hereafter. The one who created this life should have an objective. There should be a purpose for this life. So our mind, when we use it and follow the truth by recognizing the creator of this life and respecting him and worshipping him, giving from whatever he provided us and realizing the revelation he sent down to us, we will come to end the, uh, that uh, will, as a result of these actions we will see that the hereafter is a manifest reality of this life. Allah said about these people, Ula'ika, only those, 
they are أولئك على هدى من ربهم they are in a guidance from their Lord so it means there is no second way to have that guidance the guidance of the Creator if you do not follow this way you will not receive any guidance from uh, any other way this is the main way of the guidance Allah gives the guidance for these people only those who use their faculties those who respect the truth those who look for the truth those who use their mind their heart recognizing their creator worshipping him these kind of things mentioned in the ayah if we follow them we will receive that guidance otherwise there is no guidance Allah said they are upon a guidance from their Lord and they are those and they are those who will be successful in this life and in the hereafter they will reach the, that paradise the reward of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and before that they will be able to receive the forgiveness of Allah and they will uh, uh, be forgiven from punishment of the hellfire because of their sins this is the falah falah means two things you receive the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because no one free of sin Firstly, you receive that forgiveness. May Allah forgive us all. He said, فَمَنْ زُحْزِحَ عَنِ النَّارِ وَأُدْخِلَ الْجَنَّةِ Who could, uh, who rescued from the fire, فَمَنْ زُحْزِحَ عَنِ النَّارِ وَأُدْخِلَ الْجَنَّةِ Then admitted the paradise. فَمَنْ زُحْزِحَ عَنِ النَّارِ وَأُدْخِلَ الْجَنَّةِ they are those who succeed these are the five ayat of surah al-baqarah كما حملته على الذين من قبلنا ربنا ولا تحملنا ما لا طاقة لنا به واعف عنا واغفر لنا وحمنا أنت مولانا فانصرنا على القوم الكافرين والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته